This is a film about climate change and corporate leadership, not in the West, but in India, where the economy and the people are profoundly vulnerable unless action is taken now. My name is Marla Nimhera and I'm a climate campaigner. I'm also part of a new generation of Indians for whom climate change is our generational challenge. This is an issue about our future and the decisions that we take. Will we act in time? If we don't, then we won't be able to make the transition to a society that's capable of protecting its citizens and the environment. Where will that leadership come from, however? Where will the innovators come from who will prevent us from making the mistakes of the West? Our work suggests that Indian companies and Indian entrepreneurs are ready to play a big role. This is their story. This is a story about climate heroes, Indian style. A good place to start is Calcutta. Now renamed Kolkata, the city was home to the East India Company, the world's first joint stock corporation and the precursor to the modern corporation. On the other side of Jarangi, one can find the modern inheritors of the company. The giant ITC. Its chief executive, Yogi Deveshwar, was one of the first to sound the alarm in corporate India on sustainability and climate change issues. Everybody has to get engaged, particularly business, because business has got so many touch points with society. And not only because it has financial resource, but it has the managerial resource. We have to create a totally new definition of purposes of business. The Tatas can indeed be credited with laying the foundations of modern India. Now JJ Irani, the former head of Data Steel, heads up the group-wide committee on climate change. Main, shall we say, emphasis of our, of our attempt up to now has been to find out in a way how guilty we are or where do we stand. Without uh, an awareness of climate change, the alternative is quite dark and dismal. In fact, there is no alternative. Jamshed Godrej is a descendant of the founder. He's an ardent environmentalist and has led the movement within CII, the Confederation of Indian Industries, towards climate consciousness. All our businesses have been, have been given the, the mission that sustainability has to be a part of their agenda. On policy, we would like to see the government uh, bring in policy, uh, which is challenging, uh, for industry and for society, but do it in a gradual way. Nandan Nilakani from Infosys is another business leader with a passion for climate change and a desire to make his company carbon neutral. First of all, we must present uh, a, an approach to development which combines the aspirations of people with sustainable development. I think we have to work on multiple fronts. We have to work on renewables, we have to work on the grid, we have to work on creating a culture. We have to look at the whole issue of water. We have to look at the issue of subsidies. Preparing for a post-carbon economy is in our strategic interest. India's IT leaders have moved quickly to position themselves as carbon literate climate champions. We have at least 15,000 of our engineers who are directly involved in product design. And many of them are high-tech products. We create awareness both in globally as well as in India so that the governments understand that businesses are aligned to the goal that we have set ourselves as, as humanity. The experience of many Western multinationals on the climate agenda is beginning to be internalized and taken up by the Indian leadership. The opportunity for organizations such as ours that are very deeply entrenched in India, in India's success, in India's businesses, can only benefit from the next wave of investment which has to be in the space of uh, climate change. If we can continue to place before our corporate clients, the opportunities that exist, they take the decisions in terms of what they can do best and we stand behind them, helping them fund it, then we've got a win-win solution. We are building in, in, in the gate process of decision making, uh, criteria which will enable us to assess the, and understand the impact of that on climate change. We believe our brands will be the carriers of social change, the harbingers of social change. And we would drive our research teams, our development teams, our, our, our marketeers to be able to think about propositions, develop products which uh, will reduce water consumption per se. I used to be a mountaineer when I was younger. 
and I still have a home in, in, in the mountains, of, well, in the foothills of the Himalayas. I didn't need uh, to read books about uh, um, the impact or the changes that were taking place in the environment. What I needed to read about was the reasons for those changes, and now it's become much clearer to me that it's not just simply a natural uh, it's, not a, it's not nature that's caused this, it is human beings that have caused it. Anand Mahindra is another green industrialist who sees little tension between his role as a vehicle manufacturer and real estate developer and his desire to be an eco-warrior. Nothing will succeed unless this has gripped the heart of the, of the corporation. You have to build it or knit it into the competitive logic of your company. Do not mandate technology, mandate the level of emissions that you are going to want. And then, as I said, have regulations which are clear, transparent, consistent and equitable. For many in India, the real answer to their mobility needs will only come through non-fossil fuel-based private cars and vastly improved public transportation systems. Chetan Maini is a new type of auto manufacturer who believes in both. City mobility, especially in, in India, China and a lot of uh, the growing countries, needed solutions that were very environment friendly. So my interest always was trying to work towards that area. Uh, we have 10 global patents, mainly in the energy management space uh, that are today property of Reva, and we continue to apply for several new patents. Shagun Saxena of Reganastar and Amit Chug of Cosmos Ignite embody this new breed of ecopreneur. We've spent the last four years uh, developing solutions that we can bring to Indian companies to help them reduce their carbon footprints. We are uh, attempting to innovate on three broad areas. One is to bring disruptive technologies. Second is in the business model, which is a for-profit attempt instead of just the drip feed of government actions and charities uh, alone. And the third is to do this as an international bridge between the so-called West and the developing world. Solar energy is enjoying an unprecedented resurgence in India. With support of the likes of the Prime Minister who has pledged himself to India going solar, we have the National Action Plan on Climate Change, which includes solar energy as one of its key eight missions. There is good reason to be optimistic about solar in India. Experts say that if we dedicate just 1% of our land area to solar, we can power the entire country's electricity needs up to 2030. One of the reasons for this mood of confidence has got to be the hard yards put in already by India's solopreneurs, the entrepreneurs who've done more than most to put solar on the map. It's a group of 20-25 houses in a village where we have provided two light systems, one LED and one CFL for night lighting. And they have also got street lights in the, uh, in the outside of the, on the road so that they have common area lighting. Previously, they were all using kerosene as a primary source of lighting. So it's a complete leap, one step in terms from kerosene to much reliable, safer, and cleaner form of lighting. If you look at the poor, it's not only the willpower, it's the basic infrastructure. How do you create doorstep service mechanisms? How do you create doorstep uh, financing mechanisms to, to provide solar energy so that people don't? That, take, that will take long, and appropriate technologies for the poor to actually adapt to, to increase their income or usage. That's going to take time. And we, as in India or China, have to see that as a big, bigger threat than anything else. We have done a lot of projects in Andhra Pradesh and also in Tamil Nadu. So there are four smoke-free villages there. The idea of solar crematorium came from a man who cannot read and write. He said, wow, that's great. Can you burn bodies with it? And now it has shown us that if you want to bring in technology, not only economy or ecology, but even the spiritual way is the way to bring it forward. The, res the local resistance is no more there. In India, we don't have any single you know, megawatt level power plant. So we thought, let us have a two megawatt power plant, first megawatt level power plant in the country. And we are putting up uh, this plant in Asansol area. And India will shift from coal age to solar age. Climate change is often painted as an issue of equity and social justice. This is undoubtedly true. The poorest in our society are the least to blame and the hardest hit. Securing just outcomes for them and securing their livelihoods will be essential. Yet equity is not only social, it's intergenerational. Those with the most to lose will be future generations. As a young nation, with more than 70% of our population under 40, India has a lot at stake. This film has emphasized the importance of 2009 as the make or break year on climate change. The science is telling us that we now have less than 10 years to make the shift. If we leave it any later than that, we run great risk of runaway climate change and further catastrophe, which will be more costly.
If we're serious about solutions, we cannot expect business as usual. This film has profiled some of the innovators from India, people who can lead and should play a greater role. Climate change is a global problem requiring a global partnership. Here in India too, the mood is changing. There is a growing sense of confidence that we too can play a role in finding the solution. Indeed, that we can play a role in leading, not just expecting others to do so.